Today we're drinking a sparkly raspberry cider because we can, why not? Seventy two hundred years ago, a girl died and was laid to rest in the Liang Paninga cave in Sulawesi, Indonesia. When her body was examined and DNA research was conducted, the researchers were astounded by the fact that her DNA matched indigenous Australians and modern day Papua New Guineans who arrived in the area 50,000 years ago. Up until this discovery, it was always believed that the Asian populations entered the area some 3,500 years ago. That's quite a staggering difference. My name is Kaylee. Join me in uncovering all that we can about this newly discovered group of humans. So approximately 7,200 years ago, a girl passed away and was laid to rest in the Liang Paninga cave in Sulawesi, Indonesia. Her remains were discovered in 2015, but research was only recently conducted on the DNA. No one could have known that she was from an unknown distinct human lineage that has never been found anywhere else in the world. Her remains carried the first ancient human DNA of the island region between Asia and Australia, better known as Wallacea, which is an incredibly unique find as it was previously thought that inhabitants arrived in Wallacea some 3500 years ago. This discovery is telling us the story of a previously unknown group of humans and is giving us new insight into the population history and the genetic diversity of early modern humans in this part of the world that's not yet well understood. Researchers have hypothesized that some 50,000 years ago, the first modern humans used the Wallacea Islands, mostly the Indonesian islands Sulawesi, Lombok and Flores, as they crossed from Eurasia to the Australian continent. Although it's unknown how they navigated this crossing or the exact route they took. Researchers theorized that they built relatively sophisticated water rafts to make the crossing possible as they believed there was no land bridge between the islands. During the last ice ages glacial peaks, sea levels were 140 meters lower than today. But they believe that this was not enough to create a land bridge to close the gaps between the islands. I personally am not well versed about how deep the bottom of the sea is in this part of the world. Maybe one of the people watching this does know more and if you do then please shoot me an email, leave me a comment. I'm found on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, pretty much everywhere. History with Kaylee or Kaylee History, you'll find me, shoot me something and we'll see. We do know that approximately 4700 years ago people were living on these islands. They not only left tools, but also cave paintings to show their existence. Unfortunately, the fossil record is sparse and the conditions in this area of the world are really not great for the preservation of DNA material this ancient. The tropical climate is really the worst for the preservation of DNA. Humidity is bad. But we all knew that. Approximately 8,000 years ago, a culture of prehistoric hunter-gatherers were living in the area surrounding the Leung Paninga cave in the mountains of South Sulawesi. This is known from the incredibly intricate crafts and arrowheads that were found here dating from this time period. They were given the name the Taolin culture, but besides the arrowheads there is nothing known about them and these arrowheads are found nowhere else on the island of Sulawesi or even in the entirety of Indonesia. But now, with this discovery, we have a small window into the lives of the ancient Taolians. They laid this 17 or 18 year old girl to rest in the cave 7,200 years ago. She lived in the area known to have belonged to the Taolian culture during that time. Her remains are the first complete and quite well preserved skeleton that belongs to the Taolian culture that's been discovered. The researchers were able to extract DNA from the base of the skull from the wedge shaped petrus bone. Her remains had of course degraded over time due to the tropical climate, but thankfully it was not impossible to extract DNA, and it was more than worth the effort. Her remains showed that she was a descendant of the very first wave of modern humans who entered Wallacea some 50,000 years ago. 
These are the ancestors of modern-day indigenous Australians and Papua New Guineans. But besides that, it revealed something else entirely, something that none of the researchers had expected. Previously unknown ancient humans, as she shared DNA from a separate and distinctive group from Asia that arrived after the colonization of Wallacea as modern indigenous Australians and Papua New Guineans do not share any ancestry with this group. It was long thought that the first people with Asian genes started to inhabit Wallacea some 3,500 years ago, when the Austronesian-speaking farmers from the Neolithic cultures of Taiwan started to settle in the area. This latest discovery shows evidence of a previously unknown distinct group of modern humans living in the area already, as the new farmers came into Indonesia. The reason they were unknown is because there are barely any archaeological sites from their culture and ancient skeletal remains are almost never found. This group of modern humans that lived in the area has gone completely extinct as there are no descendants of this lineage alive in modern times. Another amazing discovery made by the DNA research was the fact that she carried yet another fascinating piece within her lineage. She carried the genome of Denisovans. This showed that Denisovans lived in a far larger area than was previously thought, as most Denisovan remains are found in Siberia and Tibet. But even this part is not without a little bit of mystery. Her DNA has been compared to the DNA of other hunter-gatherers who lived in Sulawesi around the same time, and the other hunter-gatherers did not carry any traces of Denisovan DNA. So not only is this girl a descendant from a previously unknown group of humans that went extinct, but she also carried Denisovan DNA that none of the other cultures living in the area around the same time carry within them. Researchers still have more questions than answers about the Taolin culture. This discovery gives us another small piece in an immense puzzle that we might never solve. But as they gather more pieces, their story gets known a little more each time they make a discovery. Of course, they hope to discover more remains and be able to recover more ancient DNA to reveal their diversity and the wider ancestral story that is filled with gaps and question marks at this point in time. I think it's fascinating that in the year 2021 we are still discovering previously unknown groups of humans, and links we didn't think were possible. It shows that the ancient world was way more fascinating than we can imagine. And I can't wait to see what the future brings when it comes to these new discoveries. But with that said, you've reached the end of this video. If you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos and click that bell icon if you want to be notified every single time I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner. I've put links in the description down below and I always put videos in my end card. I'd also like to thank my patrons, Barry, Scott, James, Floyd, Vaughn, Rox, Jamie Hernandez, Pradbudic, NGC6543. And I would like to thank my channel members, Neighbors Guy, Yellowhammer, Henry Hewitt, Stephen Jenny, John Jiff, Barry, and Ben Oppenheimer. And with that said, I'll see you in the next video. Bye! I could put flowers behind. Flowers are fun. Tulips. I'm Dutch. I'll put tulips behind me. Like, who doesn't love a tulip? <laughs>